What's up guys, it's Subsy here and this is the Google Pixel 4a and I've been using it for about two months now. I got it towards the end of August. I've been using it pretty much every day as my only phone up until, well, spoiler alert, I now have the Google Pixel 5 which I'm going to switch to straight after this. But yeah, this entire video is going to be focused on the Google Pixel 4a. So to get started, let's just take a look around the actual hardware of this. And the first thing you notice is the sort of material that's used. So it's plastic, but it's not like glossy plastic. So you get two types of plastic. Normally you get the matte finish and you get the glossy. Um, the glossy, in my opinion, looks a lot cheaper and it feels cheaper and it gets more fingerprints and it just looks like shiny plastic, which in my opinion just looks really bad. This reminds me of the Nokia Lumia series where um, it was a soft touch feel and it was like a unibody thing and it just felt really nice to hold and everybody loved it but it wasn't metal or anything like that at the time, it was just plastic but it just had a really nice texture to it which made it different to all the other plastic phones. This reminds me entirely of that where it feels really good in the hand. My only gripe with it is that there is only one colour and that's black and that gets fingerprints really easily. So I cleaned this phone just before this video but I mean, it's got fingerprints all over it. But of course, most people are gonna chuck it in a case so you'll never see the fingerprints um, and you may never touch the material again. So that doesn't matter to most people, but just know that plastic is durable. So if you drop it, it's not gonna shatter like glass. So I'm okay with them using this, especially for the price point. And even if it was more expensive, I'd still be okay with this sort of plastic feel. As long as it's not glossy, I'm okay with it. And then we get to the size. Now there's no going around this, it's a small phone. Like nobody's gonna look at this and think, oh my God, it's big, it's small. It's the smallest pixel you can buy. Um, and I mean, for me, I've got small hands and it's a one-handed phone for me, which is good. I mean, I was used to a Google Pixel 2 XL before this, so I was used to quite a big phone. And when I switched to this, it was a massive change. I just, I didn't like it at first. So the other day I picked up my old Pixel and it just felt huge. And I think what that shows, especially for me, is that I'm just going to get used to whatever size phone I have. So you just sort of adapt the way you use it. So when I got this, I was trying to type two-handed and it just wasn't working. And then I went back to, you know, the old ways of typing with one hand, where you just, you know, use one hand. That's just something I've become accustomed to now. So when I switched back to that or tried that again, I couldn't type with one hand, so I had to use two hands and it felt weird. It's just something you get used to. So some people prefer small phones, some prefer big phones. It's just a personal preference. Now, if we take a look around it, we can see that it has a headphone port, which is nice to have, especially at this price range. And then you have on the same side of the phone, you have the power button and the volume rocker. Um, it is nice that pixels do change the color or the feel of the power button, depending on which color you go for. In this, it's only uh, black with sort of a sage-ish um, power button. And then on the other side of the phone, you have the place where you put in a SIM card. And then at the bottom, you have the USB-C port and your speaker grills. And this does have stereo speakers, um, which we'll get into in a bit or later on in the video. At the back, you have the fingerprint sensor, which for me is one of the best places to have it. So when you take your phone out your pocket, you normally, you know, pick it up, do that, your fingers on it and it's unlocked. It's just natural. And I've been used to that for years since my Nexus 6P, which was what, five, six, 200 years ago, something like that. Um, and you know, it's just natural. For me, underscreen fingerprint readers have been inconsistent. So I've had the Galaxy Tab S6, the OnePlus Nord, the S20 I've tried. Um, they're good, but for me, they're quite inconsistent. Other people that I know who have used it have found it okay, but for me, I don't know why it just doesn't work that good. I mean, around 60% of the time it works, but the other 40, it doesn't. With this, it's like 90, 95% of the time it works. Even with wet fingers or like moist, moist fingers, um, it, it works. It's just natural to me. And with this, you can swipe down for notifications. So you can, you know, just do that which is awesome. Now this doesn't have any official water or dust rating. I mean, it's most likely gonna be some sort of splash proof, but there's no official rating. So don't go submerging this in water or, you know, taking it to the shower or to the swimming pool with you. Just, you know, be sensible and it should be fine. It should survive the rain and other stuff. So just 
don't worry too much but it's got no official rating so if something does happen you're not covered for it. And now we get onto what in my opinion is one of the main things about any phone and that's the display. So that's the thing you're going to be looking at all the time. So that's a 5.8 inch 60 hertz 1080p screen which for some people doesn't mean much but just know that that means that it's 5.8 inches it's 1080p which is good enough for 5.8 inches it's not 1440p or you know 4k like some sony phones and it's not a high refresh rate screen so you're not going to get the ultra smooth um screens like 90 hertz or 120 hertz it's normal 60 hertz and the actual panel itself is good so it's got good color accuracy um, it's vibrant enough but not overblown the uh, contrast ratio is again it's AMOLED so it's going to be infinite and the only issue I have with mine and it's going to be specific to mine because there are variations in this is mine is a bit tinted towards purple and I didn't notice it much until I compared it directly with my um, old pixel and the pixel 5 it's something that you don't notice much unless you're looking at white content white content white images or something like that but it's there on mine but again there could be variation between pixel devices and again this happens in not just pixels in any phone so you know take that with a pinch of salt so the color shift when you actually tilt the phone is where you see amoled panels fall off or fall on it's not bad per se but when you do go to extreme angles especially when you're looking at like gray or white content you sort of see the shift to purple a lot more it, it turns into like a gradient effect from like purple to green and i mean it's not really green it's just like a tint of green but you rarely see the purple at angles but you only see that in lighter content and especially with the grays you don't normally see that with colored stuff or if you're in a dark background you don't really see it at all but on a light background you definitely see it and it's only at the extreme angle so you're not going to be holding a phone like that all the time or hardly ever and um, you're normally going to be looking at it straight on and at that even like at these angles it's pretty fine so you know it should be fine for most people the rest of the screen is great i mean the color accuracy itself is good they're not like oversaturated or anything like that and you do get pretty much bezel-less phone with this. I mean, the bezel is there, it's not the smallest bezel, but I mean, there is no notch, you just get a hole punch, and you know, the hole punch is on the bigger side for a hole punch, but it's small enough that you're not gonna notice it, and it's in the corner, so it's sort of out of the way. The only weird thing, um, and it's not weird, I mean, some phones do have this, is that the chin is bigger than the forehead by just like a millimeter or two, and it's not much, but it is noticeable. Um, but you sort of forget about it afterwards but you do notice that when you first pick up the phone you'll sort of see that the bottom has just like more black bar space than the top and it just looks asymmetrical which i mean if you're picky about that then you may find it annoying but most people would you know find it okay and it is coated in gorilla glass 3 which isn't the newest because now you have gorilla glass 6 and gorilla glass victus and apple's ceramic shield and so many other technologies which Gorilla Glass 3 would help you more than, you know, just standard glass and for most people it's going to be fine, just, you know, don't drop it intentionally and don't scratch it up but it should be okay for most people because phones have been using this for some time and if your last phone was okay and you never cracked it or scratched it deeply then it should be okay but again, if you want to protect it, just put a screen protector on or something like that I don't normally do that, I just put like a normal case, I don't use screen protectors because they change the feel of the phone and feeling the glass under your fingers is so much nicer than feeling a plastic or even a glass screen protector because it adds a barrier just just be careful and don't use a screen protector so for me the worst part about this phone are the speakers there's no good way to put it the speakers are bad even for a budget phone i expected them to be a bit better because some budget phones do have really good speakers some of them even have like front firing speakers this has an amplified earpiece speaker and a bottom firing speaker and they do work in stereo mode but the separation is good, surprisingly, but the actual clarity is not, so there's no low end at all in either one of those, it seems. Um, the bottom speaker is a bit louder than the top one, um, and that's normal for amplified speakers, because, you know, it's an AP speaker that just gets made louder with an amplifier. But anything above sort of 80% volume just distorts quite heavily, and it's just not a pleasant sound to hear. Maybe I'm being a bit too too harsh on this. It's not it's not terrible, so you don't just hear it and go, ugh, it's, it's okay. But it's just, compared to the other phones that I've used, 
this isn't anything you know to be picking this phone up for so like don't expect to use it for music at all it's okay for like youtube and listening to voices and you know like audiobooks and stuff like that but for anything like in terms of like music just forget about it for even watching tv shows and stuff like that it, it's just not engaging but for youtube videos where you listen to audio or like podcasts and stuff like that it's fine um, but it doesn't get loud enough that you can you know walk around a room and still hear it you sort of have to do that weird thing where you put it up against something so it amplifies that or like into a cup or something like that just don't expect to use this phone to listen to anything in terms of media without some sort of like headphones or speakers attached to it all right, now we're going to come to the performance of the phone. Now, this is something I'm not going to spend too much time on because I'm going to do an entirely separate video of like how it performs in like games and stuff like that because, I mean, I don't really play many games, so some of you do and some of you don't. So if you don't, you don't really care about that. If you do, um, you can watch the other video when I put that up. So in terms of like internal specs, it's got a Snapdragon 730G. Um, if you care enough about that spec, then this phone isn't for you. I mean, just putting it out there, if you care enough to know what that is and to complain about that, then you know this phone is not your target market. But for most people, that's okay. Because most people who don't play games aren't doing demanding enough stuff with their phone that they would care. I mean, RAM, in my opinion, matters way more than the CPU these days because we've come so far in the CPU department that the GPU and the RAM matter way more. And, you know, going with the 700 series processor means you get way better battery life, which on this phone is actually really good. So apart from the CPU, we have six gigs of RAM, which is quite a bit, especially for a phone like this. I mean, you're never gonna have issues with multitasking. I mean, everything that I've had open stays open. I never have to like wait for apps to launch again. It's, it's been a pleasant experience and I, I do pretty much everything apart from games so you know I watch videos all the time I've got picture in picture mode happening and you know I'm texting I'm doing everything it's just there's been no hiccups for me so for me the processor has not been a deficient point of this phone and for most people again I don't think it's going to be a bad part either so one thing I would like to point out is if you're coming from a Pixel 3a that phone had eMMC storage and this one has UFS 2.1 and that's a huge difference so you won't see like much of a difference in the actual processor but you'll see a massive difference in the actual storage speed so what that means is when you're launching apps or when you're loading data it's going to be a lot faster just because of the nature of eMMC storage being quite slow you're going to notice that it's quite a bit quicker to do pretty much everything so the battery it does have a 3140 milliamp hour battery which is a number it lasts the whole day and I've never had any issues with this over the last two months um, I'm just looking at it because it's got a ton of fingerprints because I'm handling it and uh, it looks bad right now but yeah back to the charging it does support fast charging at 18 watts now that's not the fastest because you get phones now like the OnePlus 8T which has 65 watts of dash super fast something ultra fast charging who knows what the names are these days but I mean it's fine most people charge the phone overnight still and I don't I charge it in the morning or before I go to sleep and it doesn't drain much overnight so you know how some phones would drain 20% or 10% overnight as you're sleeping without doing anything this doesn't it sort of stays it just drops like a percent or two for me I'm constantly getting throughout the day without needing to top it up so I normally end the day with around 20% or sometimes 10% depending on how heavy I use it but it's been a whole day phone for me and I use it pretty much all the time and I've constantly got it on I've got it next to me the whole day even you know during work just not using it during work but yeah I do use it to watch videos I use it for social media I use it to take pictures take videos snapchat all of that anything and everything apart from gaming I even use it for like documents and sometimes excel um, which you know it's a small screen it's not great for that but it works and it's lasted me the whole day every day since I've had it so yeah thumbs up for that so cameras um, pixel phones and cameras everyone's gonna do videos about cameras on this phone because that's that's the main selling feature of this phone I mean it's a pixel it's cheap and it has a flagship camera like what's not to like I'm gonna do a detailed video about the camera video and everything for this phone in a separate video um, but I'm just going to go over it quickly in this video so that this video isn't like two hours long or anything like that. So the main sensor is the same as the Pixel 5, the Pixel 4 from last year and you know the ones before that. 
So that's to say that it's a really good sensor and it's the same sensor that they use on their flagship phones and it has the same image processing that they use as well. So you're going to get the same image processing that you get on the flagship pixels um, or flagship-ish pixels but again you do have the drawback that there is only one sensor at the back so some of the other budget phones in this range so the OnePlus Nord for example has uh, three lenses this only has the one so you're not going to get like an ultra wide or a telephoto you're just going to get the normal single lens um, I mean it looks like it has more but it doesn't it's just like a fancy square shape to make it look better I do like it actually but with that one sensor you do get all of the pixel software improvements that you get in the camera app which make it look really good so let me just show you guys some camera samples and you can really see the color accuracy in this I mean in some pictures you may think it looks dull but it's actually true to life and that's what it looked like in person so in some phones namely the oneplus nord um, when i was using that it did oversaturate some stuff to make it look nicer but this looks more natural so it depends on what you want you want your photos to look more boosted and more saturated for an instagram look or do you want it to be more natural to how you took it and then if you want to you can add the saturation in afterwards it's totally up to you but I prefer the more natural and accurate look and if I want to afterwards I can bring up the shadows you know adjust the vibrancy and bring up all the details that I want to because for me having a good starting point of what it actually looked like is better than me trying to guess what it looked like afterwards it's just personal preference and pixels have always been good at making it look like what it actually is so it's up to you now we do get night sight on this which is awesome and that's like another thing that pixels excel at their night sight photography is pretty good the white balance on that for me has been consistent so it's been consistently good um, you do get portrait mode as well you don't yet get the portrait mode with night sight that just got announced for the pixel 5 and 4a 5g but that should be coming to this later down the line and of course you get 4k video at 30 frames a second or you can do 1080p at 30 60 or 120 frames a second with the rear camera. With this selfie camera, you do get 1080p video recording. It's eight megapixels, so you can't do 4K because that just wouldn't work. So you are limited to um, 1080p at 30 frames a second. And again, you get the same features of like portrait mode and selfie illumination with this. And you can turn on face smoothing, but that's gonna be disabled by default. Um, which is in my opinion good, but you can smooth your face if you want to you can you know do normal mode video mode uh, Portrait mode and a few others so you do get like a ton of features that you can dive into but again I'll go into that in more detail for the next video So let's jump into call quality and this has been pretty good It's done a great job of blocking up background noise both on speaker and without speaker again with the speaker on It's not great to hear people because of the lack of audio quality that's coming out of this um, you just can't walk away from the phone and be walking around the room with the speaker on but if you're next to the phone and the speaker's on it's fine uh, they can hear you and it does block out their voice as well so they can't hear themselves again which is good but if you're just using the earpiece it seems really good and you know no complaints about that from other people who have been hearing me on the phone and you know people say I sound clear even through masks so when I'm wearing a mask and I've got the phone up people say that you know they can still hear me fairly clearly and it doesn't sound muffled or anything like that which is good and it drowns out like street noise or like construction sounds that are happening so that's really good and there's no complaints on that from me so this does have Bluetooth 5.0 and Wi-Fi AC so it's not Wi-Fi 6 which is fine for most purposes and you know I mean it's a budget phone you don't expect it to have Wi-Fi 6 a lot of mid-range and some flagship phones don't have it so and it also does not have 5G so if you want the 5G variant they have the 4A 5G or the Pixel 5 um, but the normal Pixel 4A does not have 5G which for most people is going to be fine and um, people don't need 5G especially these days at the moment maybe in a few years time that'll be more relevant but at least now it's not relevant to most people at all and it's for like seven people in the world so of course it does run Android and it's got the latest version so it's got Android 11 and you do get all of the like nice pixel stuff with it so you get the always on display you get the always listening so it shows you the songs on the screen sort of feature um, in the US you get call screening so you know it can screen calls for you so you don't have to answer them if it's spam and you get the new photo editing features in the new photos app and it's so much better than the old one so now you can actually edit good quality photos and you can actually adjust the blur of the photo and the depth of field in some of your portrait shots after the fact because it keeps that data in the photo so that's really good 
and it's actually replaced me using some of my other photo editing apps so I don't actually use Lightroom on my phone anymore um, I normally just you know go to the Google Photos app and edit it in there because for what I'm doing on my phone it's good enough and of course you get Google Lens you get the power menu with all of this smart home stuff built in and your Google Pay controls just in the page together and you get live caption which works really well I mean there is a delay between the audio and the text coming up but it works surprisingly well. And then there's live view in Google Maps so you can see where your friends or family are if you're you know, tracking each other's location. Um, and there's just so many other Pixel exclusive things that you, know, you have to have a Pixel to use. And that's one of the things in the Pixel sort of ecosystem that you just sort of find. And when you switch to another phone, it doesn't have it, but you thought it was an Android thing and it's not, it's a Pixel thing. And it just sort of brings you back to the Pixel realm. And I mean, it's something sweet about the pixels. So there have been some bugs for me with this. And one of the main ones or the main one has been GPS. So when I'm using maps or ways or something like that, it's been completely fine. Um, apart from Google Maps thinking I'm facing that way when I'm not, I'm facing that way. That's probably just Google Maps. The other apps that use location in the background think I'm in another city most of the time. And it just doesn't seem to fix itself. So like BBC News, for example, that thinks I'm like, 10, 20 miles that way. I don't understand because the maps apps themselves have it fine, but I don't know if that's the software or that's the apps themselves that are not doing it properly, but it's not been an issue on my previous phone and my next phone. It's just this phone. I don't understand why. And then the other issue I've been having is Spotify. And this is, I think, unique to Spotify with Android 11 because it was happening previously on my old Pixel, the Pixel 2 XL with Android 11 as well, but I thought it got fixed, but it's back again and on this phone and a lot worse. So sometimes when I go and play something on Spotify, the bottom of the phone where it has the sort of play and then the text and then the pause button, it doesn't update. So what I mean by that is the song's playing in the background, but it would just say that nothing's playing. And then when you close the app, there's nothing in the notification shade to show that it's playing and it's just playing and you close Spotify. So Spotify is not running at all and it's playing in the background and you can't pause it, you can't stop it. Anything that you play on top, is just playing on top of that Spotify track. So if you open up YouTube and play something, Spotify is still playing in the background and you can't stop it. And the only way to fix it is to restart the phone. And it's just a hassle because that happens to me like, once a week at least, maybe more. Uh, sometimes it's happening like multiple times through the day. It's just, it's really annoying when it happens and I can't seem to replicate it because it seems so random and it definitely wasn't happening much before, at least on my old phone. I think it's something to do with Android 11 and Spotify and this not being optimized together, but it's really frustrating when it does happen. So what do I think about this phone overall? Um, well, the price of this phone, $349 or £349, I don't think you can do better. Like you can probably do better in like section A or section B or section C, but I don't think you can get a more well-rounded phone, especially in Android phones. I don't think you can get a more well-rounded phone than this um, because you do get other phones like the OnePlus Nord and everything like that, but they make compromises in different ways. And I think this has the best parts of each part of a phone that you need and it puts it in, in a package which is in my opinion really attractive and it's small, it's compact and I know they're synonyms but it's small and compact and it has a great display, it has great cameras, it has great battery life, it has you know it's going to be the first to get Android updates because it's a pixel, it's got support from Google, it's, it's just a complete package at a price that you can't complain about and that's just it, there's nothing on here that you can complain about for the price and I think that's the best part of this phone where it's good at everything that it can do at this price and even if this was like $50 more, £50 more, I think it would still be an attractive phone. So I don't think you're going to be disappointed at all if you pick this phone up and I think you're going to love it more and more day to day as you use it and as you realise all the cool features that you'll get with it and everything about it. That sort of wraps it up for this long video review thing about the Pixel 4a. If you want to see more videos about the Pixel 4a or the Pixel 5 or a comparison between the two, be sure to let me know in the comments below. But if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of those future videos. But as always, it's been Subsy here and I'll see you guys next time.